go impulse and momentum time let's get let's focus it in a little bit we're gonna focus it okay we're gonna focus it a little bit we are gonna talk about impulse versus momentum we're gonna talk about what's the difference what this packet is about and uh, we're gonna go from there okay so here we go let's jump to the vocab page because with this one there's only two vocabulary words there is momentum and there is impulse. So let's talk about momentum. The, the letter for momentum is not M because we know that's mass. The letter is actually a P and I've pre-drawn some of this stuff, right? So our letter for momentum is P. Let's light it up. Let us light, there we go. Hopefully that's not too bright, there we go. So the letter is P and the formula is momentum equals mass times velocity, okay? So if something has a huge mass, it's going to have quite a bit of momentum if it has some kind of velocity. So I give you an example. If you have, so forget about these pictures right here. Let's say you have a really big dude that weighs, uh, you know, 200 kilograms running at you, and he's running at two meters per second. And then you have a small dude that weighs 50 kilograms running at you. And he's also running at two meters per second. So we have the same velocity, right? Just drastically different masses. Without knowing physics at all, you can probably be like, well, I don't want to get hit by the big dude because he, he has more momentum. He's going to smash me, right? And that makes sense because if you increase that mass, you're going to increase that momentum. Now, likewise, you can increase the velocity and that's going to increase the momentum too. So then the question is, yo, if I, if I have something that, can I have two objects with, uh, let's see, different masses and the small object, the object with less mass have more momentum? Absolutely. It's just going to have quite a bit more velocity. So our example here is you have a semi and you have a bullet. Can a bullet have more momentum than a semi? Absolutely. It's just got to have way more mass, right? The mass has got to be a lot higher. If the semi is moving slow and it weighs, you know, a crap ton and the bullet's moving really, really fast. And although it probably weighs like a gram, it's going to have more momentum, right? All right, so let's talk about impulse. Impulse is this thing on the bottom. I got nothing, no more pictures there, but there it is. So impulse, refocus time. Impulse is, the formula is force times a change in time. So a given force times a change in time, right? So pretty simple stuff, pretty easy. That's what this unit's about. Um, the impulse and momentum theorem, important to know, pretty much states that they're equal. So if you have force times a change in time, it will equal our change in momentum or let's rewrite this force times time change in time equals mass times final velocity minus mass times initial velocity easy money so that is called our impulse momentum theory this right here but anyways, you got your definitions. Momentum is mass times velocity, and impulse is force times time. Okay, so that's that. There you go, there you have it. I'm gonna put a few extra uh, uh, explanation videos on there that are not me, that are other teachers, and we will kinda, kinda sort of go from there. Um, one thing I wanna point out though, one pretty neat thing that I, wanna, I want to uh, show you, Boom. Okay. So let's talk about one thing before we go. Let's talk about how impulse and momentum are related. Okay. Because I know it's all, we always give you guys two concepts. It's like, yeah, they're equal and nobody really explains why they're equal. It's just like, hey, they're equal and you got to assume that now. Right. So let's talk about why they are related to one another. One another. And it kind of goes back to Newton's second law. Newton's second law is, if you remember, Force equals mass times acceleration, right? So, force equals mass times acceleration. Let's think about this for a second, okay? What's acceleration? 
Well, acceleration is just the change in velocity over time, right? So really we can rewrite this formula as force equals mass times the change in velocity over time. Now, it's hopefully it's starting to look familiar. So now, what if we want to get rid of this time on the bottom? Well, we know you multiply by time. Bam, gone, which means you multiply by time. So now you have force times time equals chain equals mass times the change in velocity and if we bring back our initial paper isn't that pretty much the exact same force times the change in time equals mass times the velocity right and this is just the change in velocity Mass times the final velocity minus mass times the initial velocity. That's the same thing. Change in velocity. Do I have another one? No, I don't. That's the only one I got. So yeah, that's it, right? So that's why they're related. It's our original force equals mass times acceleration. We got time out. We put it over here, and that's it. It all makes sense. It's all clear now, right? So keep that in mind when you're doing this and it's like, well, why is impulse and momentum related? Well, now you know, right? Now you know. So it's not that hard of a unit. It'll be super easy. I'll try to do uh, several of them to help you guys out and let's have an awesome unit.